Oh my gosh, Becky. Look at these logos. They look like they were made in Microsoft Paint. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Mina and today I'm going to be redesigning some chain grocery store logos. So as you can see from earlier, the ones I have are Trader Joe's, Hannaford, and Market Basket. Now, Hannaford and Market Basket are kind of, a, they're New England chains and I live in New England so they're relevant to me. But Trader Joe's, there's actually only eight states without a Trader Joe's, so, so they're a little bit bigger. But Market Basket, I remember even as a child when I knew nothing about graphic design, looking at this and thinking that it was super ugly. <laughs> And actually, when I was a kid, they were Demoulis and they changed to Market Basket. So they, they rebranded while, while I've been alive. But this looks like it was made before, way before my time. It's, it's hideous. So I'm it really excited to do a redesign for it today. Hannaford, you can tell that they had a designer do it, but the designer clearly did not know important principles for logos because it's too busy. The font is, it's good. It's, there's too much going on. There's like a, a thousand different colors and that's too many for a logo. It's just too many. And usually when you're making a logo, a good rule of thumb is if you can shrink it down really small and not lose anything. Let's see if we can do that on this. I mean, you, it's still legible. You can still kind of tell what it is, but there's just too much going on and it just needs to be a lot simpler. So we're gonna do something that is a lot more effective as a logo design. And then Trader Joe's, I just don't like the font. It's terrible. I don't like the, the jagged, like stab you points that it has. And I don't like the, the curves. It's like, it's really trying to be friendly, but it's also gonna murder you. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna start off with Hannaford here. I like how colorful it is. I like some things about it. Um, right off the bat, you can see, obviously it has this, it has this banner around this triangle shape with a cornucopia type thing going on. So I'd like to carry over some of the design elements to keep it recognizable while giving it a more updated look. So I'm going to start out with some typography here and a Ford. So I really want like a, a sans serif something or other going on. Okay. Maybe something like this. I don't know. I'll try it. I might change it later. Felt cute, might change font later. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that up there then make a copy by holding Alt or Option and then clicking and dragging it. Also, if you're wondering, the people around where I'm from call it Hannafids, Hannaf like an I, like ID, Hannafids. Hey, I'm going to the Hannafids, you need anything? That's not what they sound like. They have a main slash mass accent going on, but I actually can't do it, even though I've lived here my whole life, but that's one accent that I can't do. <laughs> All right, so Control Shift O to outline. And then, so I had this idea that may or may not work. I wanted to make some triangles all oriented in like a circle. And each triangle could be the shape of a food or something. I'm bad at explaining, but you'll see. So. First, let's make one of these guys. And then I'm just gonna just draw lines from each of the sides to their opposite sides. I'm gonna select the lines and give them a stroke. So that way I have the orientation down for all of these triangles. And they, they like make a circle, but they're also, you know. Okay, so the first one I want to do is probably one of the most obvious solutions. And that would be, oh, you know what I have to do first. So I've got to object expand this sucker. And then I'm going to go shift M and that gives you your shape builder tool. And what this is, it's an amazing tool that I never learned about in school. They never taught me this. I had to learn about it after the fact that it would have helped me so freaking much because I was sitting there trying to work with compound paths and it wasn't working and doing all of these things and freaking with stuff for like hours trying to get what I wanted it to be. And little did I know there's a whole tool that does exactly that. But anyway, and rant. See next to your cursor, there's a little plus sign, but if you hold Alt or Option, there's a minus sign and 
I'm gonna hold on alt or option and just kick out all of these shapes that I don't want and it makes them a hole instead of a shape not a hole but like a lack of lack of shape lack of it. it's just a, like a void it's like nothing it just erases it okay I don't know how to explain things I'm not articulate so what you're left with is the shapes that you want and you can also do the opposite if there's like a hole and you want that hole to be a shape just click it and it'll make it a shape it's magic. I'm gonna do some corner rounding here, something like that. And then for this one, I'm gonna make this into a carrot. So the top, I want it to be rounded like that. And then I'm going to make some cutouts with my pen tool. Let's ungroup these. So ungroup the keyboard shortcut is Control Shift G. All right, so I'm gonna select these and then Shift M again to get my shape builder tool, hold Alt and knock out those shapes so i have this nice little cutout here for the carrot and then with my direct selection tool keyboard shortcut a uh just shift select both of those anchor points so they're the same and round them out a little bit so they're not so jagged and make like a cool little shape like that or something and then i had another thought and my other thought was to make one of these a watermelon slice and then for this one i wanted to do some grapes let's make this one cheese there's our cheese. And then this one, I want it to be a pie. And then I think, let's try separating these. Take this part and put it on the bottom. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's not my favorite. It's still a little too complicated for a logo, but I think maybe they could just get rid of, get rid of half of those and just have, yeah, I like that. I like that. I think this is good. This is a good solution. The triangles call back to this triangle shape and obviously the fruits that I have going on there kind of call back to this. And I think the black really helps it to be more modern and more professional. And I think that just the cleaner design and plus look, when you change the colors all to black, you don't lose the design. It's amazing. So that's, that's a really good thing. Okay. So next is Trader Joe's. I'll, I guess we'll do it in that order. And I was playing around with fonts earlier and I think I found one that I like for it already. Trader Joe's. So earlier I found this font, which is matrix two OT extra bold. And I like it because it reminds me a lot of the original font in the way that it has some pointy things going on. And it also, it just like kind of looks like it, but just a more professional version of it. And so I think that's cool. I think I'm gonna, gonna stick with that. I'll put one version of it up here in case I need the font later and control shift O to outline. I kind of like that just as a solution in itself, just have some type. Of course, I would probably work more on kerning and so I did some research on Trader Joe's. They're actually, they started in California and I always thought from the vibe that I got when I would go in their stores is like pioneer type days trading then. So I thought Trader Joe's was like a pioneer or something, but that's not what they were based off of. It was actually more of sea trading that they were going for. And that's why all of their employees wear flower shirts and things like to, to remind you of tropics and, and whatnot. So I'd actually like to bring that back into the logo a little bit so that you can actually tell that that's what they were going for because I never knew that. So I think the way that I thought I might do that was to make like a ship or something, but I don't think I actually want to go with a ship. I think maybe something a little different like a compass rose or something like that would work. Start with a star tool, click, make it small. Okay, and then I'll do the pen tool and then I'm going to control C, control F to those lines to duplicate them and paste them in place and then turn them 45 degrees. So that way I have all of this and all I have to do is go to Pathfinder and hit divide and then it's automatically separated perfectly into the shapes that I need. So then I'm going to take my direct selection tool and select every other one and change this so that it has that. I think we're gonna up the stroke to like round this, like a lot. 
maybe 11 or so. I'm gonna do the same to these so that it doesn't look weird. Okay, so now we have this type of shape. Though I don't love that the corners look rounded with that stroke. And then I think it needs a little circle. So when you're creating an ellipse, if you click in the middle of where you want it to be, which is exactly in the middle of the shape in my case, and then you click Shift and Alt and hold those down while you're creating your circle, Shift makes it a perfect circle and Alt makes it so that it expands from the middle instead of when you do a normal ellipse, see if I hold Shift, it kind of expands from this upper left where I was doing it or lower left or lower right, whatever, depending on how you're stretching it out. But if you hold Alt, then it does it from the point, from the middle point that you selected. And then of course Shift makes it so that you can only create a perfect circle. Make that a stroke. I'm gonna make it double the size of this stroke because I think working in, if you're not gonna make things the exact same width, I think making it a multiple is the next best thing. And I think it does need to be thicker than this width. I kind of like that. Then I'm gonna select all of this and object expand. And then I'm gonna shift M again, knock out these because I don't want that to be there all. And then everything else, I'm going to just merge into one. Now that's a destructive move. So if you guys are gonna do that, just make sure to make a copy of what you're making first. I'm not going to because I don't really care about this project that much. It's not a real one, but I can't even tell you how many times that I've really needed to go back a step and I couldn't because I've made a destructive edit and then it's just gone. So make sure to do that. Okay, well, it's, all right, so there's that. There's my Trader Joe's logo. I actually think it might just be stronger with the typography. So I think that I would honestly just change the type. I think this is this I would count as my final thing. And I mean, if my hypothetical client actually really wanted a symbol to go with it, I think that might be something that could work, but I think it's actually stronger with just the typography. And some people think, oh, I, you just typed it out. I, I can make that so easily. And first of all, yes, you could make it that easily, but honestly, design is not about how hard it was to make something or how much time it took to make it. It's about the effectiveness of the design and how it affects your clients and the effect that it has on your business and, and all of those good things. So effective design trumps complicated design, even if it took more skill to make the complicated design. Okay, moving on to Market Basket. There's so many things wrong with this logo. I, I hate the colors. I, I hate the drop shadow. I hate the font. I hate the rounded rectangle. I hate the fonts that don't go together. I hate that they have a tagline in it. Don't put your taglines in logos. Just don't do it. Taglines do not belong in logos. It clutters it up. It's it's good for you to have a tagline. It's good for you to have a, a slogan or whatever, but don't put it in your logos. Find somewhere else, put it on business cards, put it on your website, put it on your marketing materials. Don't put it in your logo. Don't. All right, and B. Let's work on you a little. Like Trader Joe's, I already played around with this a little bit, so I kind of know the fonts that I want to be using. And I want to go with the mainly typographic logo for this one because that's kind of what they already have. And I think it's uh, it's one of the better solutions in this case because what, do you, what else are you gonna do? What are you gonna do for a symbol? Their market basket, are you gonna put a basket? That'll look terrible. Are you gonna put, like a little market symbol? No, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. So I think, and food, the, the only other solution would be to put food icons and I'm not doing that either because we just did that for Hannaford. When in doubt, use typography because it's it's great. It's, you read it, it it's just professional and wonderful. Marquette. So for this one, I'm going to use lemongrass script. And I don't normally use scripts in my logos, like like ever, I, I barely ever use them, but I think I was playing around with it and I think that their symbol, if they were to use a symbol, should be the M. So I wanted something that was a little more unique than just a serif or sans serif typeface. And I think this is one of the less offensive script fonts that I've seen. Also, yes, I know that there is a difference between typefaces and fonts, I'm using them interchangeably because I want to. But for the record, typeface is like the design of a type. 
and font is more like the size and weight of a font. So typeface encompasses font. That's the difference, but I'm going to use them interchangeably. And for basket, I'm actually going to do two different fonts here. Again, that's something I don't normally do, but in this case, I think it works. Oftentimes what I'll do if I'm spacing out a font a little bit is that I'll turn it correctly to begin with, and then I'll go back and adjust the tracking and I'll do specified clicks of the keyboard or whatever to keep them spaced the way that they're supposed to. So I'll give each of them like, I don't know, two clicks. That looks okay. So I want basket to be under the bulk of market, but I don't want it to be so big that it extends to the little flourishy, these things. My typography terminology is incredibly lacking. Because I think that's pretty balanced. Because if it extended all the way out, a basket would be too big, and I think it just doesn't doesn't work as well. This is a lot more, it's a lot more better. -er. Okay, so there's our type. Now I do want to do a symbol with it, but I want to keep it simple. So I want it to be with just the M. And you know what? Let's give them back their rounded rectangle, but let's make it classy. I'm all for taking crappy things and making them classy. What's going on? Please don't crash. Don't crash, don't crash. It's crashing. No, it's crashing. Control S. Control S. No. No. Ask manager. And desk. No. Rest in peace, project. Please be recovered. Please be recovered. Yes. Illustrator. Oh, you're the real MVP illustrator. Even though you just crapped out on me. What the frig is this? What? 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 Oh, I lost all my logos. No. They got like wicked corrupted or something. Okay, fixed. Let's save this. Okay. Now that I've saved my work, which I should have been doing all along, let's go back to this M. So I like that positioning. But what I want to do here is make it look like the M is wrapping around the line. Yeah, I like that. Knock out the areas I don't want to be there. And so I don't necessarily think that this M works very well next to the other M because I think that's just too much. But I think that if I were to create their style guide, I would make a rule in there stating that you can either have the whole thing written out or just have this and not both of them at the same time because they kind of clash. It doesn't even really look good when it's above it either. Or I would just have it written out in that sans serif there. So I think these would be my three lockup options for Market Basket. Okay, so that's that. Th those are my redesigns for popular grocery store chains. So I think they came out pretty well. I think they're a lot more modern, a lot more professional than the original ones. Gonna pat myself on the back for those. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace! Also, I forgot to mention that if you or anybody you know needs graphic design work, feel free to email me at contact at ninagraphicdesigner.com and I'll be more than happy to assist you.